Alright guys, Dominic here for Kit Guru, and today we are actually checking out a graphics card that has been requested by a few viewers. I am talking about the NO3D RTX 4080 iChill X3. With a very striking design and 60 MHz factory overclock, this is also the first 40 series card that I've seen that doesn't actually use a vapor chamber cooler. So thermals are going to be very interesting today. Stay tuned then as we dive in and find exactly what this card has to offer. If we start things off then with a look at the design of the card, I think it's immediately clear that this is very much designed for gamers. You can see that from the aggressive angles and swooping lines which definitely create quite an eye-catching aesthetic. Now of course it may not be for everyone but in my opinion at least it's something a little bit different. So the shroud itself is actually made mostly from plastic, but credit to Inno3D, it does still feel pretty solid and rigid in the hand. And you can also note there are these two grey metal plates that have been screwed onto this shroud itself. There is of course a benefit to going to an all plastic shroud however, and that is with the weight savings. So the iChill X3 4080 isn't actually too heavy, weighing in at just over 1.8 kilos. It's certainly not light, but it is actually a couple hundred grams lighter than the 4080 Founders Edition. You also get this adjustable GPU holder in the box as well, which is admittedly pretty basic, but it does get the job done, so no complaints from me. In terms of dimensions then, the iChill X3 isn't that large as 40 series cards go. Granted, it's not small, measuring in at 334 by 148 by 62 millimeters, but compared to the Founders Edition, there's not much in it. The i2 X3 is a bit longer, but the height and width are pretty similar between these two cards. As for the fans as well, we can see that Inno3D has opted for three 98mm spinners and we can see that the central one does spin in reverse relative to the outer two, a feature which is becoming increasingly popular and simply means that overall turbulence should be reduced, therefore increasing the airflow pressure down onto the heatsink itself. Elsewhere, we can see that there is a metal backplate fitted, and this does cover the length of the card, but there are several large cutouts towards the end. The backplate itself is also decorated with lots of small triangles, which just adds a bit of visual interest. Interestingly, while there does appear to be a notch in the backplate, which is usually where we'd expect to find a dual BIOS switch, the card itself doesn't actually support dual BIOS, so there's no dual BIOS switch. I did ask Inno3D about this, why they decided not to include dual BIOS, and they told us that by including an extra mode with a higher power target wouldn't actually bring any performance benefit, and while that may be true and is fair enough on its own, the main thing for me to include a dual BIOS switch is just the benefit it brings in terms of redundancy. So if you happen to brick one of your BIOS doing a BIOS flash or something like that, then you know you've got the fallback option. I personally think that is a fantastic reason to include dual BIOS on all graphics cards, especially cards at this price point. So for me, this is disappointing to see. We can, however, note a healthy dose of RGB lighting on the front side of the card, and this is definitely in keeping with the overall aesthetic. By default, the RGB does this kind of rainbow lighting effect, but there is actually a very small three-pin header positioned on the edge of this RGB zone. So you can physically connect the included ARGB cable and plug that into your motherboard if you do want to synchronize the lighting between the GPU and the rest of your system. It does maybe feel a little bit clunky to have to route another cable from the graphics card, but in my view, this is definitely better than not having the option at all. We can also note the 12 volt high power connector and if you guys haven't seen the excellent Gamers Nexus video and their investigation into reports of melting connectors, I would definitely recommend giving that a watch. 
all I'd really say to you guys is make sure that your cables are plugged all the way in. Display outputs are also as standard with three DisplayPort 1.4 and one HDMI 2.1. Moving on now to disassembling the card, the overall PCB design for the iChill X3 4080 does look very similar to that of the X3 OC RTX 4090 that we reviewed last month. Inno 3D here is using a 14 phase VRM for the GPU and a 3 phase VRM for the memory with 55 amp Alpha and Omega AOZ 5311 NQI MOSFETs used across the board. We can also note that UPI's UP9512R is deployed to control the GPU VRM. As for the cooler then, as I alluded to in the introduction of this video, what really makes this so interesting is that NO3D has decided not to use a vapor chamber, which is the first time I've seen a company not use a vapor chamber for all the 40 series cards that I have reviewed. Instead, they have gone for a more traditional nickel plated copper base plate with eight nickel plated heat pipes. I did actually ask Inno3D about why they decided not to use a vapor chamber and they told me that for the 4080 they actually saw better memory thermals using a traditional copper base plate and that does turn out to be true based on my testing but only slightly, more on that later in the video. I would also add to their explanation that surely a vapor chamber is going to cost more than a copper base plate and considering the 4080 runs at less than 300 watts most of the time, I would say it probably wouldn't have been cost effective. The final point to note then is on the backplate where we can see Inno3D is using thermal pads on the underside of the backplate just to help draw out a bit of extra heat from the rear of the PCB, something that I always like to see. That is going to do it then for our look at the card itself and its design and now it's time to move on to testing. For this we are of course using our regular GPU test system and this is powered by MSI. Based on Intel's i9-12900K CPU, this is paired with the MSI Meg Z690 Unify motherboard and we've also got 32GB of a Data XPG Lancer DDR5 memory. All testing was done using the MSI MPG321 URQD 4K monitor. If we start things off then with a look at thermal performance, we can see that the iChill X3 does sit at the top of the chart, coming in fractionally hotter than Nvidia's Founders Edition and the Gigabyte Gaming OC when using the Silent BIOS. That said, a peak temperature that's actually below 64 degrees is hardly worth complaining about, while the hotspot also came in under 75 degrees. So, while it may be the hottest RTX 4080 we've seen, objectively, the temperatures are still very good. Memory thermals are actually better still, with a peak temperature of just 58 degrees. Do bear in mind as well that these results shown are all from using the default fan curve, so they don't take noise levels into account. I say that as the Inno3D iChill X3 is the quietest 4080 I've tested so far, producing just 35 decibels of noise, and that does make it quieter than the Gigabyte Gaming OC, even when using its silent BIOS. That's because we saw the iChill X3 run the fans at just 1250 RPM, or 39%. For our noise normalized results then, I increased fan speed up to 52%, or 1630 RPM. That saw the GPU temperature drop to 58.8 degrees, and that is still a couple degrees hotter than the gaming OC, but it is at least now slightly cooler than the Nvidia Founders Edition. That being said, noise normalized memory thermals are the best we have seen so far, with a peak of 54 degrees. This does support Inno3D's claim that a copper base plate can offer better memory thermals than a vapor chamber, though admittedly there's not much in it. Moving on to power draw now, it's very important to note that Inno3D has not actually increased the power limit for the iChill X3, so it's still rated at 320 watts TGP, the same as Nvidia's Founders Edition. In practice, we saw it draw 314 watts in Resident Evil Village at 4K, so that is very similar power draw to the Gigabyte Gaming OC. 
In a similar vein as well, clock speed of the iChill X3 is very close to the gaming OC, as both cards ran essentially as fast as each other over our 30 minute stress test. In fact, the iChill X3 averaged 2786 MHz, which is just 11 MHz ahead of the gaming OC's OC BIOS. As we'd expect, that has a clear knock-on effect for gaming performance, as the two cards are trading blows in every game we tested. In fact, we never saw the iChill X3 come in more than a single percent faster than the gaming OC, while it was never more than 2% faster than the NVIDIA Founders Edition, so really, there's no tangible difference in terms of actual frame rates, which is why we never recommend buying a card based on the factory overclock. Of course, I did also try my hand at overclocking to see if we could improve things further, but it's also important to note here that the power limit of the card is actually locked at 320 watts, so Inno 3D didn't raise it out of the box, and you can't actually adjust it higher than the default value. So in MSI Afterburner, it is locked at 100%. Inno 3D told us they did this because overclocking the 4080 doesn't actually see any benefits from increasing the power limit, considering the GPU itself is voltage limited and not power limited. Now, I did actually make similar points in my 4080 Founders Edition review, but I would say it does depend on the specific scenario and which games you play. So, for me, I don't think it would have hurt to give users that extra 10% power headroom, but it's not the end of the world. That's because we were still able to add 115 megahertz to the GPU and 1770 megahertz to the GDDR6X memory. Over our 30 minutes stress test though, the card did run a little bit slower than the gaming OC, averaging 2869 megahertz. As for what this meant for our game benchmarks though, there really wasn't much difference between all three cards. The iChill X3 was right on the heels of the gaming OC, and the overclock actually provided a performance uplift of between 6 to 7%. Power draw didn't increase either, as we didn't raise the power limit. Overall then, the Inno 3D RTX 4080 iChill X3 is a pretty interesting card, because it does things a little bit differently to some of its competitors. Some of that is definitely a good thing, like the decision to ditch a vapor chamber in favor of a copper base plate, as we saw the best memory thermals we've seen from a 4080 so far, and you'd also imagine that a vapor chamber is going to be more expensive to manufacture. I also personally actually really like the aggressive design of the card. I think the RGB lighting fits in with the overall aesthetic really well, and it's also fantastic to get such low noise levels out of the box. That being said, there are a few design choices that I would question, including the lack of dual BIOS. After all, the iChill is Inno 3D's higher tier product, and for me, this caliber of GPU absolutely needs dual BIOS. Likewise, the decision to not raise the power limit or to not let users raise the power limit, I wouldn't say it's the end of the world, but also anyone who's an overclocking enthusiast is likely to see that and just not even consider the iChill X3, so I do think that could hurt the card's overall appeal. Ultimately though, while there are pros and cons to the iChill X3, my overall conclusion really is pretty similar to the other two RTX 4080s I've already reviewed. Straight up, I don't think the 4080 offers good value, particularly when RDNA 3 is right around the corner. If you are shopping for a new high-end GPU, my advice has been and is now to wait until RDNA 3 comes out and then we can see how the land lies. That's going to be it for this one though guys, I'm Dominic Forkit Guru. if you liked it please do toss me a thumbs up and as always let me know your thoughts down below. Are you on the hunt for a new GPU? Are you considering the 4080 or at the moment are you waiting for RGNA 3? Let me know your thoughts. While you're there please do subscribe and ring that notification bell if you haven't already and why not come chat with us on our discord server which is linked in the description below. While you're there, you can also find a link to our brand new merch store where we've got some very snazzy designs, so definitely check that out. And finally, if you're feeling particularly generous, 
You can even find a link to our Patreon, which would be fantastic if you'd support us over there. That's going to do it for this one, though, guys. I'm Dominic Forkit Guru, and I'll see you in the next video.